Capes! They're great! Have you ever tried making a cape in Minimator? Uh, no, not like that. Yeah, no, also not like that. Okay, hold on. I've got the perfect tip for you guys, and I'm gonna show it today. Before I do that, though, I wanna ask you to hit the bell to get notified of my content as it comes out. I never know what I'm gonna post, and the notification might come in handy. Now, in my animator, our Steve Boyo needs a cape. Let's give him a cape. If you remember my wavy hair tutorial, you know I talked about two methods. One of them includes items, which can overlap nicely and look pretty damn sick, but if you bend them too much, it kinda breaks. The items create gaps. The second method includes model bench and bending items, which doesn't break the item, but it doesn't allow for overlap because it's only one bendable part. Today I'm going to combine both of these, so let's leave my enemy behind and open model bench. Create a new model, start of nothing, now browse for texture, and on my desktop I already have a folder called cape underscore model. I want to import this cape texture. This is what it should look like. All you need is two sides of the cape and this on the top here is just bonus for the end. It's gonna look nice, I promise. Now what I want to do is I want to add a cube. Cape 1. Uh, I said 1, not 21. Jesus Christ. In here there's a new shape and I want you to click this UV icon because you can modify the UVs of the item. Select the upper row of the model. This is what it looks like so far, and that's perfectly fine. If you want the bending to work properly, I need you to put the pivot offset in the correct spot. So in the center of the item, the Z should be on half. So let's turn off the grid or just type in 0.5. So we can move it half the amount. It's in here, but the Y needs to go down because we're gonna bend it from the top bottom. Now, if I come back to the body part, let's see what we can do with the bend. Let's make it bendable. Now, it's a good thing to save the project. I wanna save it in the same folder. Just just in case, because whenever it comes to bending, Model Bench likes to crash. I don't like Model Bench because of that reason. Nimi is fixing it though, but until then, this is all we have. So let's bend this. You can see it works. Let's put the offset to which way, up or down? down. Minus 0.5 is the offset and the custom bending size is going to be 1. So now it's going to bend the bottom half of the item and that's it. <laughs> now what I want you to do is duplicate this item, I mean duplicate the body part, cape 2, and lock cape 2 onto cape 1. And now I want you to move this body part one unit downward, so it's continuing the previous one. The only thing you need to do is click on the shape and modify the UVs by simply placing them one pixel downwards. And this is the next row of your cape. Now you might see that the top and the bottom are using the textures from the previous part. That doesn't matter because they're both going to be hidden in the cape. Duplicate the body part, call it 3, because you're going to see the body parts. You won't see the shapes, but you will see the body parts, so you need to rename them properly. Lock it onto cape 2. It's already got the position minus 1 because we copied it before, and all of them have the bend values. However, before going forwards, I recommend you tick all of them on, because you're probably gonna want your cape to be more dynamic. The last thing you need to do is, of course, modify the UVs, and that's it. Proceed this until you are done. Now, I do gotta admit, that's a pretty long cape. You're probably gonna have a shorter one. I don't know why I picked this model. The last part is going to be special, at least for me. You don't have to do the same way as I do. It's going to use this UV, and I want to move the pivot offset to the right a little bit. This is the shape that I've made. All of them bend on all three axes, and they have an offset of minus 0.5 and a bed size of 1. That is pretty much your entire model done, and I'm gonna show you how you can use it as well. But first of all, you always you gotta save it. Control plus S, you gotta save it urgently. Now, if I open my animator, I want to click this import asset icon, cape.me model. Import that, your cape should be in the ground because we model it into the ground. And simply what I want to do is lock this cape onto this character's body. Now it's locked on the upper half, which is right. I just want to position it first. There we go, that is our cape. And if you want to animate it, we do have a lot of assets, but it's going to be worth it because this cape is going to look sick, I'm telling you. Eh, there we go. Select all of the capes except cape number one, and in the inherit options, tick on select. So when you select cape number one, they're all going to get selected. So if you bend one, they're all going to bend. As you see, the cape bends perfectly fine and there's no glitching. So it does bend nicely, it doesn't glitch, and thanks to all the items, you have overlapping action. Let me show you. Let me put it in a position like, uh... oh yeah, it's also very sensitive, so you can twist it inside itself several times. Let's move a few frames forward and bend it in the other way. Give it some of the rotational bends as well. One tip I like to use, 
use when it comes to sensitive items is just grab this and move my mouse as far out. And now as I move it, it's way less sensitive because of the range differences. It doesn't have the same value as before. So like this. Now let's select all of the keyframes and give it ease in and out. If you play this, it's going to look pretty crappy, almost like the first method I showed you. But you have all these items and the magic of overlapping action is getting cool results. So select all of them but first one and delay them by one. Ca kind of as I'm doing like now, you're going to get the stairs pattern. And this pattern, it might look funny to you if you're not familiar. I talk about overlapping action a lot because it's a very important asset when it comes to animation. If you're not familiar, this might seem funny and excessive to you right now. But trust me, it is necessary. You're going to see the difference. I'm going to put a side by side comparison as well at the end. All right. Are you ready to see the amazing work? Look at this. Oh, yeah. Now let's just copy paste this, right? Let's just let's just do that. This. Watch this. Okay, let me make the legs invisible as well. I kind of want, I kind of hate them being here. Let's just see the cape. Oh no, I've made two keyframes. Mamma mia. Okay. It's got the physics, it's got the overlapping action, it's got the bend, it's got the looks, it's got it all, basically. This is your cape model. It might be a bit too excessive. This cape is pretty long. Most Minecraft capes, if we're talking Minecraft right now, don't go beyond 13. So if I make this invisible, this is the length of usual capes. I, I went for a longer one because it just feels nice, okay? So that is it. That is your cape tutorial. I've managed to make this one pretty short. If you like it, I will not be giving you a download link. I always get questions. Can I get a download link? No, the point of my tutorial is to teach you guys to make these things yourself. So you are not stealing my assets, you're making your own. Period. It's better this way, you're gonna learn, trust me. That's it for the tutorial, thank you guys for watching, I hope you learned a thing or two, and I'm pretty sure that's all I had to say, so see you next time. Stay sharp.